Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today, we're going to be talking about radishes. Well, only for a couple of minutes. And only because the word radish comes from a Greek word, radi or radix, which means root. And we're going to be talking about mathematical roots today, square roots, cube roots. And before this lesson's over, you'll understand what a radical function is. And you'll understand the parent square root function. A radical function is just a function with a radical in it. And all it needs in order to be a radical function is a radical. Everything else in this function is not necessary to make this a radical function. For instance, this 3, this cube, this plus and 6, they're not necessary to make this a radical function. And I could get rid of this, for instance, cube sign here and make this a square root function. It'd still be a radical function, but it would also be a square root function. And I could get rid of that 3 and that plus 6 and make this the parent square root function. y equals the square root of x. And this is kind of an important function because all the other radical functions are variations of this. So let's graph this function. I started by creating a table with x values of minus 4 to 9. And when I calculated my square root of x, or my y value, the first four were square roots of negative numbers, or imaginary numbers. And I can't graph those. So, my domain starts with x equals 0. My domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. And when I graph this, it looks like this. This is the graph of the parent function. And all the other radical graphs are variations of this graph. For instance, here's another radical function. y equals 3 times the square root of x. And if we graph that, it wouldn't be just like the parent square root function, y equals square root of x, because we're multiplying all our values by 3. So all our y values are going to be multiples of 3 greater than the y values in the parent function. This value right here where x equals 1 is going to be 3. This value is going to be 6. We're going to stretch that function. We're going to give it vertical stretch because we're multiplying every square root of x by 3. How about this function? y equals the square root of x plus 4. Well, we're not stretching the parent function here. All we're doing is adding 4 to each value. In other words, we're just lifting this whole parent function up by 4 units. And it'd look like that. The intercept of the y-axis is not at 0. It's at 4. And we call that a vertical translation. What about y equals 0.5 times the square root of x? Well, now we're not stretching our parent function. We're shrinking our parent function. And all our y values are going to be half what they were in the parent square root function. It's going to look like that. And that shows vertical shrink. How about this one? y equals minus the square root of x. Well, now we're just taking each y value and making it negative. We're going to drive that entire curve below the x-axis so that all the y values are negative numbers. And that's a reflection in the x-axis y equals the square root of x is our parent 
square root function. y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k describes all the variations from the parent square root function. And each of these letters, a, h, and k, will change the way the, the equation graphs. For instance, if a is greater than 1, we're going to have vertical stretch. Our y values are going to be increased by a multiple of a, and so they're going to be higher than the parent square root function's y values, and the graph will be stretched upward. If a is between 1 and 0, or if a is a fraction, then we're going to get vertical shrink. Each of our y values will be decreased by a fraction from the original y values in the parent square root function. If a is less than 0, if a is a negative number, then all our y values will be made negative and our graph will be reflected around the x-axis. Our h value tells us horizontal shifts. If h, is po if h is negative, then our graph will shift to the left. If h is positive, then our graph will shift to the right. K defines shifts up or down the y-axis. If K is positive, then our graph will shift up the y-axis from the parent function. And if K is negative, our graph will shift downward along the y-axis. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. We're asked to graph the function y equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2, and then compare that graph to the parent square root function. First thing I want to do is create a table of x values and y values. And I picked x values that started at minus 6, and went up to positive 10. Now when I calculated my y values based on the equation y equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2, I discovered that some of my y values were imaginary numbers. They were numbers that included the square root of a negative number. Well I can't use those, so I'm going to start with an x value of minus 2. My domain is x is greater than or equal to minus 2, and I'll graph those values. When I do, it looks like this. The blue line is the graph of y equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2, and the red line is the parent square root function. Now, how do these graphs differ? Well, let's refer to the generic um, uh, radical function equation, y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k, to see what the differences in the graphs are. First thing I'll look at is that plus k. That plus k defines a shift upward or downward along the y-axis. My sample problem has no k value, so I have no upward or downward shift. Next, let's look, next, let's look at the h value, minus h. Well, our sample's got plus 2 plus 2 equals minus minus 2. And h defines shifts horizontally along the x-axis. Our h value is minus 2, so our parent function is shifted two units to the left along the x-axis. Now we'll look at our a value. Our sample a is 3. That's positive 3. We're increasing each of the y values by a multiple of 3 we're getting vertical stretch of our y values. So our sample problem, y equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2, shows a horizontal shift 
and a vertical stretch as compared to the parent square root function. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Well, Iris and Sebastian are sailing mathematicians. I bet you all want to be sailing mathematicians. I do. That sailboat looks pretty darn cool. And Iris and Sebastian have found out that the relationship between the length of their water line, the water line is just this length of the foam that's kicked up behind the boat, the relationship between H, the hull speed, and L, the water line, is H equals 1.34 times the square root of L. And we're asked to graph this relationship. So we'll create a table of L values and the resulting H values. And when we graph that, it looks just like this. Now how do you think this graph varies compared to the parent square root function? Well, think about it. We've got an A value of 1.34. So we're multiplying or increasing all our H values by a multiple of 1.34. We're stretching it upward. We've got vertical stretch. Now, we're next asked to calculate what the length of the water line would be if our hull speed were nine miles per hour. If H equaled nine, our equation would be nine equals 1.34 times the square root of L. I could divide both sides of that equation by 1.34 and I get 9 divided by 1.34 equals the square root of L, or 6.72 equals the square root of L. Now I could square both sides of this equation, and I get 6.72 squared equals the square root of L squared. The square root of L squared is L. 6.72 squared is 45.1. So I've determined that the length of my water line was 45.1 feet. If I look at my table or I look at my chart, my graph, that's about what I get. When my hull speed is 9, right about there, the length of my water line is greater than 40 but less than 50, 45.1. Well, that's our lesson on graphing radical equations. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and there you'll find some worksheets and quizzes on this subject. I hope you learned a great deal today. I hope you had a pretty good time and I hope we see you again real soon.